Frailty is a word that we've all at some point or the other used as a descriptive term. But increasingly we're realizing from the evidence base that in relation to older people, it's important that we begin to recognize frailty as a long-term condition rather than simply a descriptive term. This is very important because it does mean that we are able to diagnose it, we are able to stop it from getting worse, and for those older people where their frailty does get worse, we are then in a position to be able to improve things and get them better. Very similar to what we would do with somebody with other long-term conditions like COPD, asthma or diabetes. Recognising frailty as a long-term condition is extremely important because it will lead to better outcomes for our patients because it's not only just an adjective term that we use to describe people but it becomes a condition that we can diagnose, we can recognise and we can take the necessary steps to improve outcomes for all our patients. Frailty is everybody's business. Early recognition of frailty helps to improve the outcomes for those older people living with frailty. The first way to recognise frailty is when we have a medically stable patient and we use the Rockwood Clinical Scale to determine a score of their frailty. Everyone over the age of 75 years of age would have a Rockwood clinical scale completed on admission into DCHS services. And from that, we'd be able to determine their frailty score. The second way that we can recognise an older person that is becoming frail is when a patient is admitted presenting with one or more of the frailty syndromes. The five frailty syndromes are loss in mobility, a new acute confusion, i.e. delirium, becoming more susceptible to medications, i.e. polypharmacy, a loss of mobility and incontinence. Once we have determined the level of frailty for an older person, a comprehensive geriatric assessment needs to take place, as well as robust care planning that looks at social, physical, medical, physiological and all their care needs. This care plan needs to look at maintenance for the patient and also future and emergency care planning. We need to improve transfers of care between care settings to improve the outcomes for the older people living with frailty. Ideally in the form of better communication, better discharge planning, liaising with other professionals including their own GPs, social care, voluntary groups and their families. Frailty is everyone's business and earlier recognition helps to improve outcomes for older people living with frailty and helping them to live well for longer. So we have developed a frailty page on my DCHS, which I would really recommend um, that you take some time to have a look at. There's a particularly lovely case study there that um, Lynn Yates, uh, one of our advanced clinical practitioners uh, with an interest in frailty has put together. And it just highlights how early recognition um, of patients presenting with frailty syndromes is so important so that at a very early stage in their journey we can start to put the necessary care and support around these patients in a way to prevent them from getting worse over time. I would really encourage you to take some time to have a look at the DCHS frailty page on my DCHS as we continue to strive to improve the quality of care and outcomes for our patients living with frailty. Thank you.